Good evening and thanks for joining us on Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Danielle Croyder. And I'm Jacqueline Allen. A huge headache for people traveling by train today after yet another derailment in our state. Denver 7 was there as buses of passengers from a stranded train in Grand Junction were brought to Union Station tonight. All of this after hours of confusion for travelers. The freight train derailment happened on the same rail used by Amtrak's California Zephyr. Now, I spoke to some travelers who were worried about getting stuck here and have a look at what led up to all of this. A major mess on the tracks when a train derailed outside of Nederland. 15 cars carrying diesel fuel oil and liquid toppled over. Fortunately, there were no leaks and no injuries, but quite a bit of confusion for commuters after the fact. The train is run by the BNSF. The tracks belong to Union Pacific and miles away on each side of the cleanup, Amtrak commuter trains are waiting to use those same tracks. I can't drag this trip out too much longer. It's two and a half weeks long as it is, so I'm kind of getting that that get home itis. John Davidson is hoping to get back to Pennsylvania. The problem is the eastbound California Zephyr is stuck in Grand Junction, while the westbound train had to sit here at Union Station. Officials say total cleanup could take 36 hours. Some travelers caught by surprise when they showed up. This morning I uh, brought my rented car south and dropped it off. And as soon as I got in here to Union Station, I turned on my phone and uh, learned that there was a uh, a disabled freight train. Amtrak tells Denver 7 alternative transportation is in place for both sets of travelers on either side of the derailment. Right now, the cause of the derailment is under investigation. I also asked Amtrak tonight if they have a plan for tomorrow's trains, if that track is still blocked. And tonight, I'm still waiting to hear back. This route is also used by the Uinta Basin Railway that hauls waxy crude. We're told the federal government is looking into the impact of that route. Just last month, a separate derailment in Puebla shut down both lanes of I-25 for days and killed one person. Digging deeper tonight, Colorado rail workers have stressed the importance of rail safety long before today's derailment in Gilpin County. Lawmakers do have plans to address that next session. A bill has been introduced for next year aiming to limit the maximum length of a train operating in Colorado. And among other things, it would require certain railroads to carry minimum amounts of insurance when they're transporting hazardous materials. State Senator Lisa Cutter will be sponsoring that legislation, which she says can get tricky since trains pass through so many states. We can only go so far, but sometimes when you do the right thing, other um, states will jump on board and then pretty soon it's a national model or there's federal legislation to reinforce that. And the Federal Railroad Administration does not regulate train length, but says they do study it. President Joe Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law offers $5 billion to states for railway improvements. And the first round of funding selected dozens of projects across 35 states. However, Colorado was not chosen in that first round. Earlier this year, lawmakers introduced the Railway Safety Act, which, if passed, would require railroads to be more transparent about transporting hazardous materials. It would also boost support for first responders during disasters. The act passed the House and is now being considered by the Senate. 